Gavin Dawson from the GPAC Nation here, Port Wyneme, California. Just a 12-minute drive from uh, Cowboys training camp over there in Oxnard. And yeah, I have it. My four reasons I believe the Cowboys are going to have a big season in 2021 and win 11 and a half games or more. I took the over on it. I did. I, I bet with Mike Bassett. But here you go. Uh, number one, Dak Prescott. He looked great. First practice of training camp today. He made an incredible throw on the run to his left, probably 40, 45 yards down the field. And a great throw, good anticipation, dropped in the bucket. He showed to me with not only that play, but a lot of other uh, moments throughout practice where he appeared to be highly mobile. And if he's favoring the broken leg, it is only by a smidge. I think he's 90, 95% somewhere in there. Whatever percent it is, it is definitely good right now to be one of the top 10 quarterbacks in the NFL. Number two, the second reason I believe this Cowboys team is going to win a lot of games. I don't know if the defense is going to be really good, but it's going to be a lot better than last year. And one of the reasons is the young players, they are really coming up now for this Cowboys defense and Dan Quinn's unit. And, you know, last year was a rookie year for Trevon Diggs, and at times he struggled. He got beat, but you could see through that he had a sense for making plays in the football. Well, this year, it was apparent in, in practice, uh, number one, the coverage skills are just a little bit more refined. He is a little bit less likely to be shaken from my perspective. And as a result, I, I see that man being in position to make even more plays in the football. Past breakup today, you know, he's always going for the strips. And it's, it's very difficult in this league to be talented enough, to be aware enough, to put yourself in a position where you can tackle the guy that you were covering. But before you do that, maybe take a quarter second to try to punch the ball out. And, you know, I think that's a rare level of awareness. I don't know if he will, you know, develop the other techniques and skills to be an all pro or a great in this league. But I think he's got a pretty good chance to make the Pro Bowl considering how many times he's going to create fumbles and, and possibly interceptions if he can come down with those. Number two on defense, though, is the rookie Micah Parsons. And this guy's not only, uh, you know, incredible stand-up linebacker, but they continue to explore using him as a, a, as an outside uh, edge player in, in more of a 3-4. Um, uh, he's got the natural ability to just go out on the field and do that. And I think Dan Quinn is going to use it to wreak havoc. You know, one of the most important things a, a coach can do is fool the other team by the sub package he's putting in. And now if you have Parsons' ability to either play stand-up linebacker or go put his hand in the ground, now you're giving yourself a real great opportunity to send a package out there that the other team makes a giant error in uh, anticipating what you are about to do. And I'm excited for uh, Micah Parsons' his ability to just naturally make plays. Uh, I think he's uh, you know, one of the rare players who maybe he hasn't refined all the techniques or watched all the film, but he's so fast and so gifted at finding the player with the football that he's going to be able to step in and make a big impact almost immediately. Now, I know uh, it's been a fun run for, for Tank Lawrence. We look forward to having him on the Cheap Bag Nation. But, you know, uh, I think those hot boys, they just they, they got a little long in the tooth. You know, they're the men now. And being a man, a full man in the NFL is, is not always a good thing, okay? You start sniffing 30. And maybe your production ebbs a little bit, and it's time for uh, the next generation. I think that's what we're looking at here with this generation. Now, reason number three, I, I do believe this Cowboys team is set up to win a significant amount of games in this regular season is the coaching staff. You know, I, I, I mentioned Dan Quinn. You guys know, I'm, if you listen to the show, I'm not the biggest fan of Mike McCarthy, but I think this just not having Mike Nolan in the mix, you know, a lot is said about last year's defense and it was bad, but they dealt with a really insane amount of uh, turnovers by their offense, putting them in a horrible field position. And then on top of that, the, the bad coaching and the horrible decision to change the scheme away from what the strengths of the players were, it put them in a really bad spot where chemistry was bad, communication was horrible, coaching was bad, and things really got away from them in a way in that first half of the season that it's not going to repeat itself. That's a tiny sample size and one of the most unlucky and chaotic situations we've ever seen. Not a fan of Mike McCarthy. I think he really let the team down in a pandemic year, not talking with Mike Nolan or having more control about the need to stay more with what was familiar. As a result, I think three of McCarthy's uh, defensive coaches that he recommended were let go. And now you have a guy in Dan Quinn who, you know, was a Super Bowl defensive coordinator with the Seahawks. And 
and, and helped coach the Falcons uh, back to the, uh, the Super Bowl as a head coach. Okay, as disappointing as the end was there, his resume is, is really good. And we had uh, Leighton Vander Eich on at 5 o'clock today. Salute to LVE. Best of luck to him in a, in, a, in a huge season for him. But he said, you know, Dan Quinn's just been a, a, a breath of fresh air. Okay, and then reason number four, I believe this Cowboys team is primed and set to win a bunch of games here in the regular season. I'm calling it 12 or more. I really am. How about you? Let us know. Text in or something. Leave a comment down below if you might be watching uh, on social. But, um, yeah, the, the health of this football team is huge. Tyron Smith, perhaps the, the best player of the Cowboys over the last decade, at least in the conversation for top three at worst, top two. Uh, he looks good out there, you know, and it's hard for me to tell because I don't have the scout's eye, it, you know, uh, but Broadus studies those guys. And to me, Tyron Smith looks about the same, but he's got more of an old man body now because he's this going into his 11th year. He's, you know, he's now on the other side of 30 himself. And I saw him move and I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, but Brian came back, gave the full thumbs up, not only on Tyron, but also Lyle Collins. And if you don't know Brian Broadus, G-Bag Nation, this is the first time we've been out to training camp with him. And uh, he's a former Cowboy scout, former NFL executive. He knows what the heck he's talking about with this kind of stuff. So, you know, Tyron had uh, had the injuries piling up on him and ultimately culminated last year in the need for a significant back surgery. And here's the bottom line with this uh, this Cowboys roster. The uh, front office has done a really nice job at finding players that don't get hurt, you know. And sometimes they take a risk on a guy like uh, Jalen Smith or, or Sean Lee back in the day, and they've gone through stretches where I think they – overdid trying to find uh, you know star players later in the rounds by taking guys that were super hurt that bites you in the butt well over the last 11 years the Cowboys have only had more than average NFL injuries twice okay and then uh, four or five of those years they had significantly less than average so uh, you see it you've already been seeing it you know it, what happened last year was horrible you know Dak Tyron and Collins you kidding me that's just crazy but it, uh, you know, the, the history shows that that is highly improbable uh, to happen again. And, you know, that along with Dak's re recovery from injury and these young players on defense and the coaching staff, you know, what you got in uh, in 2014, what you got in, in 2016, and what you got in the second half of 2018, I still believe that is strongly in the DNA of this football team. That is who those guys are. Now, are they going to win in the playoffs? I don't know. You know, I think – that could be a year or two away of watching these young defensive players, you know, grow into um, real stars, and they got to stack more. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Jerry and Steven call me crazy, but maybe spend some money on a free agent. Maybe find a safety. But the raw materials are there now with bigger guys on the defensive line, two new linebackers, three young corners who are all showing potential and are tremendously athletic. I, I think the uh, the parts are are starting to show up as long as this offensive line can hold. We just need Tyron, Zach, and Lyle to stave off father time. And this is going to be a real fun year. Okay, there you go. My four reasons. What do you think? Check us out. The G-Bag Nation, two to seven weekdays at 105.3 The Fan. Maybe I'll do another uh, one next time I see something that catches my eye here at 105.3TheFan.com.